Now, from Into Tomorrow, this is an ITTV special report. Our next guests are innovators of luxury sculpted glass speakers. What? Yes, and you've got to see the video of this interview as well, because by the time you hear and see this, we'll have inserted video of the speakers. For some lame excuse, the guests couldn't bring these big, heavy glass objects into the broadcast booth, but we'll give them that because they really look nice at their exhibit, and we're going to show you. Those listening on the radio or a podcast right now, when you can, just come by intotomorrow.com where you'll be able to see all of the videos of all of the interviews. So, right away, let's get to the president and CEO is Nelson uh, Fatole. Hello, Nelson. Gla Hi. Good glad, <laughs> glad to have you with us. And the COO of Green Sound Technology is Shane Shamlu. Hello, Shane. How are Good you? Dave. Great. Thank you. You guys have a very unique product, no doubt, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to be sure and talk to you. So tell me about making speakers out of glass and how this is very cool. We're not talking about plexiglass or, or some plastics of some sort, but actual tempered glass and their speakers. Right. How do it work? <laughs> well, uh, the, the concept of the glass speakers is based on uh, working with transducers or, or similar to transducers, which, is, uh, which generates the uh, vibration. To, to the glass, and okay. the whole glass vibrates and generates a very crisp, clear sound. And uh, the difference is that the sound waves in the conventional speakers uh, sort of cross each other and hit each other. Mm. With, the, with the glass speakers, the sound waves travel in a straight line. So e uh, every sound that's generated on the surface of this, uh, the glass, is, it travels in a straight uh, direction, almost like a microwave. Now, uh, does that mean that it's a sweet spot right in front of the speaker, or is there now a dispersion of that sound, no. even though it's traveling in a straight line? Yeah. Uh, no, there is no sweet spot, because every, uh, as you're listening to music on, uh, from the glass speakers, uh, the instruments within the music, or the, or the vocal voice, mm -hmm. uh, will, uh, will be spreaded, will be separated on the surface of the glass based on the frequency response. So... Uh, if you have a high frequency the, uh, within the music, the high frequency instruments, for example, such as guitar, will be on the top of the glass. Uh, because the sound, the high frequency sound will tra travel up. Okay, the and this is, mind you, the same piece of glass we're talking yes, about, right? Yes, yes. So yes. the sound knows, or basically it's because it's a higher frequency, will be up higher on the glass. Because of the shape of the glass, the, okay. the, sh the glass is constructed, and the, uh, if you actually see the holes on top of the glass, uh, it would have less mass on top part of the glass. And the, as you have less mass, that means it's high frequency will travel automatically towards that direction. Gotcha. And the lower frequency, of course, at the, the platform and almost uh, one third, uh, third of the glass will also have the lower frequency. In the, the mid-range would be basically the middle part of the glass. Mm -hmm. And now, depending on what instruments are within the music, for, such as, for example, piano, piano usually ends up being the middle part of the glass. And if you're listening to guitar, it would be top part of the glass, and b uh, bass and drum would be obviously at the bottom part of the glass. And this is a, a piece of glass that's sculpted and engineered, no doubt, for the right size, but is sitting on a pedestal. And does it, would it take the place of a normal, say, home theater speaker if we're using it in a home? Of course it can. It can, yes. Okay. And, uh, and would it be a lot more money? I mean, how does it compare cost-wise for those listening and watching? Maybe uh, Shane can uh, There we go. <laughs> Cue <laughs> Shane when we talk money, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, uh, besides the fact that this is a speaker, it's also an art piece. Uh, we try to keep it that way and, and implement certain artifacts mm -hmm. uh, within the design. And um, so, therefore, uh, you're not just purchasing a speaker, you're purchasing a, uh, an art piece, you're sure. purchasing a light fixture. Uh, because it's almost like a beautiful glass sculpture in the exactly. living room. Right? Exactly. And as a matter of fact, uh, one of our models uh, is, uh, is made out of a hand chiseled glass. So it, it takes a lot to make this glass. We probably destroy anywhere from to 10 to 20 pieces before one comes out. 
So it's almost trial and error to make sure it's exactly the way it needs Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. Well, it's, wow. it's the you know, chiseling of the edge because it's both sides. Yeah. Uh, if it's one side, it can be done by machine, but because it's both sides, it has to be done by hand. And mm. uh, it's a tempered glass. I mean, it's, it's glass, so when, as soon as you hit the chisel, it might break. Right. So I, so I get the liability issues there, too, and the fact that you might be eating up a lot of glass. Uh, so how does that compare now, again, price-wise, to regular speakers or even high-end regular speakers? Uh, uh, I think uh, within the high-end uh, speakers, the price range uh, that we have, it fits there. We're also working on the smaller units, uh, more uh, cost-effective for those who are interested in it. And uh, we, we are also looking uh, for the more reasonable price models for younger uh, generations mm -hmm. and uh, maybe you know. for college dorms and things exactly. like that and then exactly. have the of course the orbis speaker and circus subwoofer separate subwoofer is that also made of glass uh, of course the, the subwoofer itself is is a traditional conventional uh, okay. subwoofer we can't make that uh, out of glass but we design it so it fits the, the design of the Orbis or the, the, uh, the other models. Got it. And I, and I get that glass does contribute to the fidelity of whatever you're listening to. And you mm -hmm. said, be it music or voice. So I guess even Into Tomorrow would sound good off the glass. Yes, yeah. it does. <laughs> so we'll have to see how that works. Meantime, we invite you to visit their website at gstspeakers.com. GST, cleverly enough, as in green sound technology. Speakers. Dot com. And, of course, when uh, you visit us at intotomorrow.com, we'll link you to Nelson and Shane's site. You'll see what they're doing and all of our guests here at IFA in Berlin. So we want you to stay tuned. Gentlemen, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. We'll let you get Thank back you. to your uh, busy booth. Thank and you. And we'll look forward to coming and experiencing the speakers and being able to show more of a video of them, of them at work. Thank you very much Thank for you. having us. It's our pleasure. We're back with more from Berlin, Germany. I'm Dave Graveline. This is Into Tomorrow on the Advanced Media Network.